So this is Baruch here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolot, and we're going more deeply once again into the this English parish, which is very nice. It's an explanation of what of what this mystery is that Rabbi Barbachana brought us. So we had some background in the last lecture, where we mentioned mentioned uh, a couple of things. This this Torah has to do with song, holy and profane, the study of Torah, especially the Talmud at night and judging people favorably. So that's the story that we are given, and it happens to be attached to this idea, which is coming from Rabbi Babachana. We have a peerage from the Holy Rashbam, which explains Rabbi Babachana a little bit, but now the Rebbe is really going to explain the whole thing. It's a mystery story. So the following Shabbat, when we had this incident that took place in the yesterday Shir, uh, where the Chazan, who was a follower, there was a, there was a machlokas between a, 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 a Rebbe, a person who's called the Shpola Zayd. He was a Hasidic rabbi who lived in a town near Breslau. And his, he was a tremendous opponent of Rabbi Nachman. And he fought him in any way that he can. At this Shalom Zachar that took place, we saw that the Chazan, who was a supporter of the Shpola Zayd, he uh, refused to sing. And so the rabbi, Rabbi Nachman, left off last week's, uh, le- yesterday's share by saying, uh, the next day, Shabbat, Rabbi Nachman taught this lesson, quoting from Pro- Proverbs, he remarked, doesn't scripture teach that anyone who keeps company with prostitutes loses his wealth? So over here, we were seeing that the Chazan, why didn't he sing at the, sing at the Shalom Zohar? He said, because he lost his voice. So here he says the chazan, the wealth of the chazan is his voice. So what does it have to do with keeping company with prostitutes? And this fight is going on with Rabbi Nachman and the Shepulah So the following Shabbat, one of the poor residents of the Dijon also made a Shalom Zachar. So now they're in the Dijon and there's going to be a new one. This time the chazan didn't even show up. This callousness, the callousness, incensed several members of the community, and they sent a, a, a delegation to bring the cantor, so that the poor man would not be embarrassed. So apparently it was their custom that when a male child was born, that they would have a celebration, which we do this today. But then they would bring, the chazan would come, and he would sing, and he would bring joy into the whole occasion. But then this chazan refused to come. But when they arrived at the cantor's home, they were surprised to find only his wife there. The cantor had gone out, telling her that he was on his way to the Shalom Zohar. On their way back, the delegation decided to look for the chazan at the home of his best friend. When they got there, however, they were again disappointed. The house was dark, and no one responded to their knocking. They were about to leave when they spotted the cantor running out of the back door. For some time there had been talk about the cantor and his friend's wife, but the rumor had never been substantiated. So now there's a possibility that we find out that the cantor is really an adulterer. So the cantor's friend had birds nesting near his house, and the cantor attributed his frequent visits there to his desire to hear their melodious chirping. Now, however, the truth was out, that he was really after his friend's wife. The news spread fast, and the cantor fled from Ledesian in shame. So after this incident, it was clear to the people of the Ledesian what the Rebbe meant when he said that I'll just have to give him a voice when he said that. And since he had lost his voice, that's why he claimed he couldn't sing, and why the Rebbe quoted the verse about associating with prostitutes. The town's inhabitants were awed by Rabbi Nachman's prophetic vision. Many became his followers and, inspired by this lesson, forms group to groups to study Mishnah and Talmud nightly, as we are about to, about to hear. So let's go back to, to where we're at now. And there's a, there's a number two over here. And uh, we'll pick it up. Behold, when someone listens to the singing of a singer who is wicked, it is detrimental to his serving the Creator. Music, bad music. 
But when he listens to a singer who is virtuous and worthy, it helps him, as will be explained. So over here we have a comment, and we'll read the comment. Try to understand it. So he said, but when he listens, that, that to someone whose voice, who's a virtuous person, and listening to their voice, it helps him. The following is Reb Nussen's explanation of the concepts of voice and speech. So who was Reb Nussen? So Reb Nussen was a person who came from a town, I think it's called Nimrov, which is right next to Breslov, about 20 kilometers from Breslov. And Reb Nussen became the scribe of, he was a great rabbi. His wife was from a great a rabbinic line. And uh, he became a follower of a chassid. So his family previously had all been what you call Litvaks or Ashkenaz. So he became the concept of, so his, his insights are fundamental to understanding the thrust of this section in particular and the entire lesson generally. So he writes like this, the voice is an extraordinarily potent means for arousing a person from spiritual slumber. This is the import of the, import of the teacher, the, what is important of this teaching. The voice arouses concentration. Now he says this, this is a, uh, in the Shulchan Aruch, in Aruch Hayim, and it's the beginning of, of uh, Mesech des Brachos, and uh, many different places, and also in Lukot Maran. So he says like that, yet the main arousal of one's mind, one's intellect, comes when a person's heart is aflame with a burning desire for holiness. Let's read the words again. When the main arousal of one's mind, how do you, the real arousal of a person's mind, the ability to be able to, I don't know, use your mind? One's intellect comes when a person's heart is aflame with a burning desire for holiness. That is to want to become one with the Ain of Parcho. For when the mind is bound to an inspired heart, the result is holy speech. This is, is, we see the sound, of the, this psalm right here, the 39, verse 4. My heart was hot within me with my contemplation of fire blazed. I spoke out. So we see like this is that when we are really consumed by our desire to come close to God, so we need to, we need Him. That fire starts the, the voice to work, starts the mind to work. Thus, as important as the voice is to spiritual growth, it must ultimately be harnessed with the power of speech. Now, he's making a differentiation here, which is a Kabbalistic one, which is, is the difference between voice, which is called kol in Hebrew. Oh, that's a voice. But when you use words, which I'm reading now and right now, it becomes different. It becomes more concentrated. And he says it must be harnered, uh, harnessed with the power of speech. We see then that the voice can kindle a burning desire within the one who listens to it. So the possibility is that the voice, that's just the sound, so the sound of the chazan, has the ability to be able to, to, to contribute to a tremendous arousal in the person who hears it. That burning desire for holiness or otherwise manifests in speech. Now, Reb Nelson adds this, Holiness is an attribute associated with the world of unity. Profanity is associated with the world of separation. Now, let, let me read the words again just for one more time to try to frame my own mind. He says, Rabbi Nassim adds, Holiness, what is Kedusha, holiness? Is an attribute associated with the world of unity. Unity means that opposites come together become one because the real reality even though we live in a world of separations and even husband and wife are not together like Adam and Adam and Eve were they're originally one body we're not like that everything is separate here and lost and hidden well who's your mate where's your mate how do you find your mate So that's the world of unity. Now, profanity, bad talk, 
It's associated with the world of separation. We put somebody out and we start talking bad about them. That moves them away. When a person listens to holy song, his arousal and desires bring him to unite voice with speech. This enables him to come closer to God. But if a person listens to profane music and song, to song that draws him to the vanities and desires of this world, and just think about the American radio and all the music that you hear constantly and never stops. Now, maybe Alexandra's ragtime band or going backwards was not so, so profane as it is now, but it is profane and getting more profane. So he said, this is a song that draws him to the vanities and desires of this world. He separates voice from speech. Now, this is a Kabbalistic concept. It's the concept the voice is male and the speech is female. That putting those two together is the goal of life, not the, not the opposite. This leads to becoming distant from God. This is Baruch Fleischmann, and we've been reading the commentary on the third Torah of Rabbi Nachman of Breslau.